In this lesson, we're going to be rotating figures in a coordinate plane. The success criteria is, I can identify a rotation, I can find the coordinates of a figure rotated about the origin, and I can use coordinates to rotate a figure about the origin. A rotation, or turn, is a transformation in which a figure is rotated about a point called the center of rotation. The number of degrees a figure rotates is the angle of rotation. So right here I have a picture of an analog clock. If you're watching this, you might be used to looking at time with a digital clock. But the reason I'm showing this is because we're going to be using the terms clockwise and counterclockwise. So an analog clock, the way it works is these hands all move and it tells you what time it is. Okay, And the direction they move is referred to as clockwise. So if you follow my mouse right here, all of the hands on the clock go this way. So if I start at the top, then I go right. And if I start right, I go to the bottom. If I go from the bottom, I go left, and I go from the left, I go up. That direction is referred to as clockwise. And the opposite direction, so if I go from top to left, left to bottom, bottom to right, and right to up, that is referred to as counterclockwise. We're going to be using those terms in the rest of this video. So now we're on desmos.com, and I'm just going to show you quickly what a rotation is. So here we have our original figure, and I'm going to rotate this. So right now, the red triangle is being rotated, okay? And as I move my slider, this is being rotated about the origin, okay? So this right here is a rotation. So I've come all the way, 360 degrees, it's a full circle, there's 360 degrees in a circle, and that gets me back to my original point, okay? But if I go the opposite direction, now I'm going clockwise, and our original direction, we were going counterclockwise. So this is the opposite of an analog clock, okay? So that's the idea of what a rotation is. Now, I'm going to go back to the original point right here. And the angles of rotation we're going to deal with are going to be 90 degrees, which looks like this. So that's 90 degrees. And then 180 degrees, which is right here. And then 270 degrees. And 270 degrees, you'll actually figure out, is just 90 degrees in the opposite direction. All right, and then 360 is back to the original figure. For example one, you must rotate the puzzle piece 270 degrees clockwise about point P to fit into a puzzle. Which piece fits in the puzzle as shown? All right, so I have point P here and I'm rotating 270 degrees clockwise, okay? Now clockwise goes from this direction. If I start at the top, I go right and so on. If I wanna go counterclockwise, I could actually turn this into 90 degrees counterclockwise. So this piece would go here, this part would go here, and this part would go here. Okay, so I'll do both ways. So for clockwise, 270, I'm gonna have this piece go 90, 180, and 270. So I'm looking for this piece to be here. Okay, so if I'm gonna draw a new puzzle piece, this top piece is gonna be on the side. And then this piece right here, 90, 180, 270, that's gonna be at the top. And I'll kind of draw my little puzzle piece right here. And then this indented part is gonna go 90, 180, 270, that's gonna be at the bottom. So that's gonna be right there. So I wanna find a puzzle piece that has part of it going out right here, here, and then an indented part here. Well, that's gonna be answer C because that fits all of our criteria. This goes right here, this is right here, and then the indented part is at the bottom. So C is our answer. Once again, if you wanted to do this using 90 degrees counterclockwise, you would have said, okay, this piece right here is going to the top, this piece is going to the left, and then this piece is going to the bottom. That might be easier, but either way works. Anyway, we know that choice C is the correct puzzle piece, and now we're done. You can use coordinate rules to find the coordinates of a point after a rotation of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees about the origin. Rotations in the coordinate plane. When a point x, y is rotated counterclockwise about the origin, the following are true. For a rotation of 90 degrees, x, y turns into negative y, x. For a rotation of 180 degree, x, y turns into negative x, negative y. For a rotation of 270 degrees, x, y turns into y, negative x. In a rotation, the original figure and its image are identical. And I'm going to scroll down here. A counterclockwise rotation of n degrees is the same as a clockwise rotation of 360 minus n degrees. Similarly, 
a clockwise rotation of n degrees is the same as a counterclockwise rotation of 360 minus n degrees. So for our purposes, when we're dealing with a 90 degree rotation, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, all we need to know is that a 90 degree in one direction is a 270 degree in the opposite direction, and 180 degrees is the same no matter what direction you're going. Also, looking back up here, this can be useful, but you don't need to use this. You can make all of your rotations graphically, and that will work too. For example two, the vertices of a trapezoid are w, negative four comma two, x, negative three comma four, y, negative one comma four, and z, negative one comma two. Rotate the trapezoid 180 degrees about the origin. What are the coordinates of the image? So, if you look right here, it says a 180 degree clockwise rotation and a 180 degree counterclockwise rotation have the same image. So you don't need to specify a direction when rotating a figure 180. We were already kind of talking about that earlier in this video, but anytime it says 180 degrees, it doesn't matter which direction you go in. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is draw my original trapezoid here by plotting these points and labeling them. So I'll do that in black. So negative four comma two, that is W negative three comma four, that is x, negative one comma four, that is y, and then z is negative one comma two. All right, and so I'm gonna draw this trapezoid. All right, so now that I've drawn my trapezoid, I'm gonna rotate it, and because it doesn't matter which direction I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna pick clockwise, okay? And my center of rotation is gonna be the origin, so what I can do is figure out where I'm going from the origin and then where that's going to be for the image. So for a 180 degree rotation, that's just the opposite direction. So up goes to down, right goes to left, down goes to up, and left goes to right. So what I'm gonna do is just take each one of these vertices and then plot the image that is rotated. So I will start with Z because it's the closest. So if I start at the origin, I have to go up two and left one. But like I just mentioned, for a 180 degree rotation, I wanna go the opposite direction. So instead of going up two and left one from the origin, I'm gonna start at the origin and then go down two and right one. So I'm gonna plot that point as Z prime. I'll do that in purple. And with the same logic, I will plot y prime. So to get to y from the origin, I'm going up four and left one. 180 degrees means I'm gonna go the opposite. So from the origin, I'm gonna go down four and right one. So I'll plot this as y prime. And then I'll do w next. So for w from the origin, I go up to left four, which means that from the origin, I'm gonna go down two and right four. and I'll label this as W prime. And then last, I'll do X. So to get from X, I have to go up four, left three. So now I'm gonna go down four and right three. So it's right here. All right, and then for my image, I'm just gonna draw my dotted lines, but you can draw solid lines if you want, just make sure that's labeled properly. And as I'm saying this, I need to make sure that I write X prime. So I'm gonna draw my image with the dots or dashes, whatever you want to call these. Now I just have to write down what the new vertices are. Coordinates, I should say. So I'll do that over here. So X prime is just going to be three comma negative four. Y prime is going to be one comma negative four. Z prime is going to be one comma negative two, and then I'll put W back here just for alphabetical order purposes. That's going to be four comma negative two. Anyway, I've successfully drawn the image on my coordinate plane and I've labeled my coordinates of the image and now we're done. For example three, the vertices of a rectangle are A, negative three comma negative three, B, one comma negative three, C, one comma negative five, and D, negative three comma negative five. Rotate the rectangle 90 degrees clockwise about the origin and then reflect it in the y-axis. What are the coordinates of the image? 
So first I'm going to plot my rectangle. So that's going to be negative 3, negative 3, which is A. And then B is 1, negative 3. And then C is 1, negative 5. And then D is negative 3, negative 5. So I will draw this rectangle. Sorry, this rectangle looks a little crooked. Um, I'm not able to use a ruler on my iPad. Anyway, now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. So clockwise is this direction. Okay, so if I start at the top, I go right. Right goes to down. Down goes left. And left goes up. And then 90 degrees is just one turn. Okay, so if I go top to right, that is a 90 degree turn. So I'm going to take each of these vertices and then figure out how I get to them from the origin and then change all these directions. Remember, top goes right, right goes down, down goes left, and left goes up. And that's how I'm gonna find my new coordinates after the 90 degree turn. So let's start with point A. From the origin, I have to go down three, which means my new point, I'm gonna go left three. And then I also have to go, when I'm down three, I also have to go left three, which means for my new point, I have to go up three. So this right here is gonna be A prime, I'll call it. I'll do this in purple. It's A prime, okay? And then to get from B prime, I have to go right one, which is the equivalent of down one, okay? And then after I'm right one, I have to go down three, which is the equivalent of left three. So this point right here is going to be B prime. Now I'll do C. So C right here, I have to go right one, which is the equivalent of down one. And then when I'm right one, I have to go down five, and when I'm down one, I have to go left five. So this one's gonna be C prime. And I'm noticing I forgot to label this as point D. Sorry about that. Anyway, now for point D, I have to go down five, which is the equivalent of left five. And then I, from, when I'm down five, to get to point D, I have to go left three. But going left three, that's rotated 90 degrees, from this point is actually going up three. So this is going to be D prime. So I'm going to draw my dashed lines. So that's D prime. All right, so now that we've rotated the figure 90 degrees clockwise, we need to now reflect it in the Y axis, which means that the Y axis is going to act as our mirror. So we need to take this right here and then just have the mirror image on the other side. So all I need to do is figure out how far each of my points are away from the Y axis and then just put those on the other side. So A prime is three units away from the Y axis, which means A double prime is gonna be three units to the right of the Y axis. So I'll do that in green. Label this A double prime, just because it's the second transformation that we've done. And then D prime is five units away to the left from our mirror, the Y axis, which means that it's gonna go five units to the right for, eight, for D double prime. And then same thing. Down here, C prime is five units away. So I'm going to go five units right at the same Y value. So it's going to be C double prime. And then B prime is only three units away. So it's going to go three units to the right, which is right here. B double prime. I'll draw my dashed or dotted line, whatever you want to call it. So now I've successfully drawn my final image of both of these transformations. So now I'm gonna draw the coordinates, or write the coordinates, I should say. So A double prime is the ordered pair three, comma three. B double prime is three, comma negative one. C double prime is five, negative one. And D double prime is five, comma three. So I've successfully completed both transformations and I've labeled the coordinates of my final image and now we're done. For example four, a carousel is represented in a coordinate plane with the center of the carousel at the origin. You and three friends sit at A, negative four, negative four, B, negative three, zero, C, negative one, negative two, and D, negative two, comma, negative three. At the end of the ride, your positions have rotated 270 degrees clockwise 
about the center of the carousel, which is the origin. What are your locations at the end of the ride? So I'm gonna draw our initial coordinates. So A is negative four, negative four. B is negative three, zero. C is negative one, negative two. And then D is negative two, negative three. You don't have to do this, but what I'm gonna do is draw a little polygon, just the positions of all the people. All right, so now we have a 270 degree clockwise rotation. So we could take all of these and go one, two, three, rotate it 390 degree turns clockwise, or what I could do, if you remember, 270 degree clockwise rotation is the same thing as a 90 degree counterclockwise because if I start here and then go 90 degrees counterclockwise, I'm just rotating once and it's the same position. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm really gonna change this 270 degree clockwise rotation into a 90 degree counterclockwise. I'm just writing CC for counterclockwise. Anyway, I'm gonna start at the origin, which is the center of this carousel and then I'm going to figure out how I get my points to where they are. So I'm actually gonna start with B because this is gonna be the easiest. I'll do this one in purple. So to get from B, I go from the origin, I just go three left. Well, 90 degree counterclockwise, left turns it down. So all I have to do is just go three down. So this is going to be B prime. And then now I will do C because it's, it's right here. So I'm going down two where down turns to right, and then I'm going left one. Left turns to down. So instead of going down two, left one, I'm gonna go right two and down one. So this point right here, two comma negative one is going to be C prime. Now I'm gonna do point D. So to get to point D, I'm gonna go down three, left two. Well, down is going to right, and left is going to down, so I'm gonna go right three, down two. So this is going to be D prime. And then for A, I'm going down four, left four. Well, down turns to right, and then left turns to down, so I'm gonna go right four, down four. And this is gonna be A prime. I'm just gonna draw dotted lines for the image, AKA after the carousel ride is over. So now I just need to figure out the locations at the end of the ride, which is right here. So I'm just gonna write down these ordered pairs. So A is the ordered pair, or A prime I should say, is the ordered pair four comma negative four. B prime is zero comma negative three. C prime is the ordered pair two comma negative one. And D prime is the ordered pair three comma negative two. Anyway, I've successfully rotated the image and labeled my coordinates, and now we're done.